What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another Josh Potter Show. It's your boy, Any Kravitz, and today my guest is none other than Josh Potter. Ooh, I'm a guest today. Yes, sir. I loves it, my friend. The uh, inner city blacks. Oh boy, that's loud. Pipe that one down a little bit. You really but wanted hey, to nail that in. Got it in there. <laughs> The one and only John Otto, of course. Any Kravitz, do you, is that what you, I should call you? I don't know if I should say the whole name. I, did you call yourself any Kravitz just now? I did, I think. Yeah, that's why I was like, huh, he does call himself that. I thought that was just like your Instagram. No, I've had like 17 different names, man. This this nigga in the back knows. Fucking yeah, no, I, for sure. I've been a thousand different things. But yeah, any Kravitz is what I go by today. And uh, and and I'm, I'm kind of kind of stoked, kind of wild, freaking out that I'm here. Real wild. I'm yeah, happy that you're be here, here because you, you're you're going to be leaving the city soon. So I'm happy that we could have you in before you do that and uh, head down to Austin. Something else is heading to Austin. Maybe, perhaps, they, uh, the Buffalo Bills are threatening to move to Austin. We'll talk about that in a little bit because I'm going to, I mean, I'm I'm losing my my mind. The Austin Bills is what they would this be called? Is what the, I mean, this that's potentially what could happen, and I we'll get into it. But right now, I want to let everybody know. Uh, of course, it is another episode of the Josh Potter Show. Thank you for joining us for another Tuesday. And I am going to be in our nation's capital, September 30th, Washington, D.C., D.C. Improv. Come buy tickets, go to the show, and then I will be going back to my hometown, Buffalo, New York, where hopefully the Buffalo Bills will not be leaving. And I'll be there Thanksgiving weekend, the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right after Thanksgiving at Helium Comedy Club. Those tickets should be on sale by the time this episode airs. If they're not, I'm going to make lightning rain from the skies no i'm just kidding but i uh i will be annoyed frankly but they should be on sale so go buy all of those tickets thank you to everyone who subscribes to the youtube channel if you haven't please hit the subscribe hit the little bell and we'll be on our way and keep continuing to subscribe to whatever you listen to on audio uh whether it be itunes spotify whatever the case may be please continue to uh like subscribe rate review all of those things they help a great deal but yes any is here today and i'm so excited because so, finally we can put to rest this debate i know where you stand probably i don't mm. even think i've discussed this with you mm. but i think i know where you stand i'm gonna guess oh, when it I, comes to the fly situation oh yeah see so you must not remember when we well uh, I, I do but i'm trying to put it off because i'm trying to make it more organic for the episode but i'm going to just leap to a conclusion that you're an over-the-top guy for sure, man. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, because I'm not trying to catch my dick in a zipper, bro. That's what you're scared of, the zipper. Yeah, okay. Was it, Isn't was your it, dick so strong that it's like oak where you just, why would you fear a me, a, just a shitty little zipper? Isn't my dick strong enough for metal snapping it to not hurt? Is that what you're... You really think you're going to leave is your, your dick, dick made in of? the... You're gonna, I don't know. I just... I don't fear the zipper. I don't fear. I've had the zipper scrape the sides of it slowly, but it doesn't, like, hurt. I just oh. go, oh, we got to spread the uh, fly out a little bit more on these particular pants. What, 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 what about the balls, though? You, you take your balls never, out when you pee? No, but, like, what if, like, you've never had it where you zip and then it, like, accidentally... Oh, whoop. My balls hang low enough where maybe it's just my elderly age, but my balls are hanging within my... Uh, you know, my clothes enough where they don't even interfere with the zipper. I mean, I guess that makes sense. To be fair, I haven't tried it. It's just in my head. There was a movie. Something I, about I Mary. Think, Everyone cites it. Is that what it is? Yes, where he's like, ah! And it's like, that's because he's an idiot. Is it Jim Carrey? It's slapstick. It's Ben Stiller. Oh. But Jim Carrey probably has a fly thing at some point. Maybe the... Are you thinking of, um, is it, there an I, uh, me me and Irene, what was that fucking movie, Me, Myself, and Irene? Yeah, I think so. Maybe there was a fly scene in that. But I, sure, I it was all the, so. all the rage as far as slapstick comedy goes. But you know what's so, what, I mean, Dick Van Dyke tripped over a fucking ottoman that people aren't like getting rid of ottomans in their house. I mean, I don't have an ottoman. Okay, well, touche, <laughs> touche. But I knew you were going to be an over-the-top guy, and I thought maybe yeah. you would uh, shed some light. But it is the fear of the zipper, is it? It's the fear of the zipper, and I mean, I mean, look at me. I'm wearing sweatpants right now, and it, there's no hole in it. So I wear so many different uh, types of bottoms that it's it's it's. I'd say it's more rare for me to have a hole to go through 
And so because of that, I kind of just got used to it. But yeah, that that sipping up the the balls really just I, it, it is that it's that image. I still remember that image. It was like it, it wasn't uh, uh, directly. It was like one part of it was up here that was that was in it that was stuck, and then the other part was right here and it was stuck. And I can't get that image. I understand the fear of a scrote snare. Yes. I mean that's why I have a hard time taking a literal razor to my balls. Mm-mm. Manscaped, I have to, baby. Yeah, manscaped all the way. Thank <laughs> God for them and their technology. But I'm saying, like, if you were to take, like, a Mach 3 to your scrote, oh. I would fear catching. I do it on my face all the time. I cu- cut my face here and there. Yeah. And so my balls are very much more sensitive than that, obviously, what with the loose skin and such. And so, therefore, I've never really taken a straight razor to my Ooh. my sack. I feel like Ooh. that's taking your life into your hands. That's straight mountain man shit. You got to be fucking... You got to have balls of steel to do that. Yeah, like you're just like fuck. pulling your fuck. I've, I've, I've had people tell me how they do it, and they just like, they're like, yeah, you just pull the shit taut, and you fucking run the... But oh. still, dude, it's like there is a thin layer of very... The thinnest, maybe the thinnest layer of skin between your actual ball and Earth. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's like when Apollo 13 went into space, and there was only a few thin pieces of tin foil protecting them from the vacuousness <laughs> of space... They are, that's why there are like you know men of steel. I am a pussy. I could never do that. I mean, I'm with you. I, I guess I'm a pussy too. Cause I, I ain't putting no damn razor on my balls. Even the manscape like freaks me out. But it has that plastic like guard. Yeah, that guard where it's like it's just not gonna happen. But I'm still scared because it's it's sure it's so fucking sensitive and so thin. Oh my god. Uh, nah, man. I ain't trying to mess around. Yeah, no. I I, I uh, have you ever had a woman do it for you? Like, ma- like manscape you? No, but that's kind of an interesting... It's fun, but it's also like you're putting someone else's life in your hands. I was about to say... They yeah, have to like, be really in tune with what's going on. Yeah, you really got to trust this chick. I don't know. Don't have someone do it for their first time. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. But we have some <laughs> feedback we can... Uh, I wanted to... Because we we're going to do this last week with Adam Ray, but we didn't really uh, get into it too much. But I wanted to save them for you. Oh, So shit. this one says, hey, Papa Roach. Uh-huh. I've stayed silent far too long. I was watching your latest episode and had to pause in the middle of pissing through the fly debate to write this email. I've been an outcast in my friend group for years now because of this very topic. Until watching your show, I thought I was the only person who wasn't cousin fucking halfwit that thinks they need to get entirely undressed simply to have a quick piss. (laughs) I have some thoughts. I went to school for design and currently work as a plush toy designer. Interesting. While toys may not be clothing, I studied under first-class fashion designers for years. I can confidently say, while the fly may have been centrally designed around being able to expand the waistline more for ease of putting and taking off, we as logical human beings have adapted this wonder for engineering to better suit our lives. For example, boxer shorts and briefs. There is no button to open up the waistline. However, the open fly remains. The only reasonable explanation for this is that it remains to allow our trouser snakes to poke their head out, get their business done, and get back on the road. There is no possible other purpose. I beg your listeners to try and find one. I have tried to conform. I'll admit it. Every time I do, my belt smacks against the backsplash of the urinal and makes me want to vomit out my ass. That's the thing. The urinal is such a open-air situation. You're undoing things. You're un- whipping your belt out. It just seems so much quicker and cleaner to zip that fly down, haul my dick out, and then just piss, shake it, pop her back in. But you have to like bend it though. You got it. You got You got to. First of all, you have to go in. You have to find it, right? You have. To, you have to reach it. Mm-hmm. And then once once you once you have secured the bag, you have to bend, and then you got to pull it out of the fucking the two hole two holes. By the way, it's not just one. It's two holes. Yeah, but you just get in there and grab it. But you know where your dick is. It's on your body. It's not like you have to search around for it. But it's so much easier to just blap, blap, blap. See, now this is where I disagree because I feel like my dick is already hanging to a certain angle. And therefore, when I open the window, mm-hmm. I can just go loop and it's out, right? When you have to go over the top, you're going up and over and it's like pressing against my base, clogging the tubes, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you can put it down lower, but also like then you're at a urinal. There's a guy over here. There's a guy over here. I feel like I'm being very much more discreet taking my dick out through the fly than I am pulling down my pants a little bit and <laughs> risking maybe like my ass showing out the back. I don't know what you all Wait. are doing with this. No, you, you don't, because because 
Okay, first of all, we we you do the button and then you unzip and then you do the underwear, right? Like you don't just straight up pull down your pants. You're not fucking in fourth grade. I don't know what y'all do. All right. I'm well, curious. I want to know the logic here. Well, we definitely don't get naked. It's not like that. Like our ass Some people are do. sticking out. There is I a mean, faction of your kind that are dropping trow at the urinal. Those, those niggas didn't develop right, but... Mentally uh, <laughs> limited. <laughs> limited capacities. <laughs> but if you're me, if you're, if you're like me... Then you do you zip so that there's like the you know the I don't know fucking canal I don't know what to call it but there, there's there's room for it and then when you pull right down you're the, opening the it's like a valley yeah exactly exactly and so when you pull it down it's like your dick's free it could go anywhere what 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 if you want to fucking do a little bit of this you know a little, little bit but of then that? you have to re do it all up again yeah it takes fucking. Three I don't seconds. know see it all does a little zippity do that's all I'm saying but his guy continues he says. How do these people sleep at night? Additionally, when you need to piss in the woods, maybe on a camping trip or what have you, do you unbutton your entire getup just to have a quick piss? What if there are yeah. children? What if there are bears? You're entirely exposed. Children? Where I'm pissing? It might be in the bathroom. But you said you said camping. Well, I don't know. I'm. I mean, you and I are not huge campers. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, would, I would argue. So I don't really know his his example isn't ringing true with me exactly either. When you're in the woods, I feel like you can just go to your ankles. Who gives a shit at that point? But if what? there is a bear or something and you have to run, it makes it quick. Uh, it makes it less quick, obviously. I mean, guess who'd be able to piss on that bear's eyes and be able to get away faster? I guess I mean, that's true. <laughs> I got more freedom, baby. This move clearly some dick swinging, hyper masculine nonsense involving who has the biggest, loudest belt buckle. Hey, cowboy, I'm taking a piss. What do you need? You need stirrups in the bathroom? Okay, he goes on. He's really upset about the belt buckle. Yeah, this guy's mad. Regarding the dick cut on the zipper argument, here we go. Oh, shit. There is a simple solution so long as you are not a toe-sucking R-word. Simply <laughs> take the edges off your boxer fly and then pull them just barely in front of the zipper teeth. This creates a smooth and safe channel. I mean, well, that's a little much. Every, wait, wait, wait. every pant comes with most pants, by the way. The zipper is protected by a layer of denim. So the zipper is here, and there's a small piece of denim that c comes out over it. So if you're still, like, somehow ham-fisted enough to get your dick caught on those teeth, you are a fucking R, if you ask me. <laughs> In conclusion, the design of pants and undergarments clearly points toward the through- through the fly motion being the intention. Through the fly is cleaner, quick, and safer all around. I have to say your promotion of the movement has given me new confidence to take me into every single day knowing that three-fourths of everyone around me is a goddamn moron. Thanks for the laughs, and keep it up. Roach since day one, that's Adam. Man, this man sounds like he used this as, like, his fucking senior thesis or some shit. That's what I like to see. Like, it's fucking... Someone who really considered it. Unbelievable. Like, he, he's given fucking engineering terms as he's explaining why this is better. No, 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 no. You don't like all the logic? It's too many skewed? too many big words I got lost. I love I love a good big worded uh <laughs> thesis. <laughs> let's hear one more here. I mean we have a bunch more here, but let's see what this one says. Uh hey oh fudge. Uh, hey, Josh, I am, in fact, a fly guy, and let me say it is the greatest discovery of life. For one thing, I am a little bit of a husky fella, so it takes me a little uh, work for me to undo the belt and the buttons. I know it's a minor inconvenience, but nonetheless, simply unzipping and pulling the helmet out is so much simpler. I always wear underwear that has a little hole and flap uh, for the twig, which makes it even easier to piss and send a quick dick pic at work. Well, that's... <laughs> That's something, I'm not <laughs> condoning that one necessarily, but hey, Ross. Might have wanted to read that one over before you sent it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you got to do, needless to say, I'm a devout out-the-fly guy, and I think everyone needs to give it a shot. I do agree with Ross in that sentiment. If you're out there, I'm trying to convert people. I know that I'm not in the majority. The poll stated that. It's about oh, six, it? 60 to 40. Mm. That's the ratio. Mm. Yeah, exactly. It makes sense. It's more comfortable. But here's the thing. I don't need to be in the majority for me to feel righteous in my in my uh, actions. Tell you know? The majority of people aren't uh, smart, you know? That's fair. That's fair. I'm more refined. <laughs> so dare I suggest that you out there give it a whirl. I'm just saying, try it out. You never know. Maybe you'll come aboard. I want to get jackets, though, like through the fly jackets, members-only style. <laughs> 
Hey, Hell Josh, yeah. I figured I would give my two cents on this issue. More often than not, I am an over-the-waistband guy. Here's someone on your team. Okay. I mainly wear sweats and gym shorts, but this also works with jeans. Simply, you slip one thumb down, both your boxer and pants uh, waistbands to pull them forward, and then you pull your dick out with your other hand and piss. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. That's, that's incorrect. Well, you guys all... Ha- that's the thing. Y'all do it differently with no. these over-the-top things. That's incorrect. He's... he's, he's for you, either you got a tiny ass dick, or you're not getting not. Remember how you said that you feel like you're clogging the pipes? Yeah. That if if you're pulling the jeans and your boxers down at the same time, you're definitely clogging pipes. Thank you. You gotta undo the button at the very least. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. That that man has has issues. He, he probably he has another suggestion here. Uh, however, I don't go through the boxer fly because it either is annoying button or. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, instead, I pull the left boxer leg up where my dick hangs and pull it out the bottom. Well, that's just now you're all over the place, dude. Pissing for what? this guy is a nightmare. Wait a minute, pull it from the bottom. He pulls his boxer leg up so that he could pull his dick out and still go over the top. You're insane. No, right? If, Too if, much. If, no. Whoever. Who? What is his name? This is Tyler. Huge Tyler. fan of you and your show. Uh, well, it's maybe not anymore. Tyler, but, uh, get some help, bro. Get some help. It's that, tough. That has to hurt. That has to be really inconvenient for no reason. You don't got to do that, man. It's Unless tough. your dick's like 19 inches. He's fucking just going around in mazes and shit and then pulling it out the front. What the... F- why? The debate will rage on, I'm afraid, <laughs> and I just... I don't... I haven't heard any conclusive evidence that makes me think I'm in the wrong, despite the numbers. Wait, well, hey, you told me to try it. Yeah. Why don't you try it? I'll give it a try. I do wear sweatpants on occasion, so mm-hmm. I have to do that. I mean, it is part of the... Um, necessity of pissing in sweatpants, I mm-hmm. will say. But for when sure. I have jeans on, it's not even a thought. Okay. So how about we do it for a couple weeks? I cannot. You I can't? Can, I was just in an airport yesterday, and I thought about it. I was, like, starting to. I'm like, I got to go, though. I got to go. I got to piss and get out of here. So, like, it just doesn't seem efficient. Yeah, but you won't know until you try. I mean, I can sit there and say, with confidence, undoing my belt and button is not something that I want to do in a public airport bathroom. All right, man. I'm just trying to I might as well go sit in a life, stall bro. and tap my toe underneath to someone else and try and get a <laughs> fucking blow job at that point. <laughs> you know, I thought about you today too because I was listening to Joe Rogan interview the woman from North Korea mm. who, by the way, whew, so hot. That was oh, the yeah. whole thing I saw the whole time. I was like, she's telling these horrible stories about living in North Korea and like, <laughs> escaping vo- via walking through the Gobi Desert and everything like that from <laughs> China and everything and I'm just like she's so hot. No, you, you could be safe here baby. I'm such a fucking reductive asshole. <laughs> let, let me see a picture of her. Do, we, do you have a picture? I mean you got you got to just look at the still of her on the Joe Rogan thing and then I read some people are like really up her ass because she got like plastic surgery. It's like let her get some plastic surgery. Who gives a shit? Yeah what the fuck who cares? She's in America now. <laughs> yeah. Let her she do was... whatever the fuck she wants. She escaped North Korea, for Christ's sake. Let her get her fucking boob job or whatever it is that she got. I'll show you a picture on here. Show me. Maybe you can put one in after her, Sean, here, if, you, if you're struggling here. But you got to look at the one. Because, again, she has, like, um, she has gotten uh, a little bit of work done, but it looks great. Oh, she here? Yeah, there she is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's the whole deal. She's, mm. no, trust me. I mean, her her eyes are a little... You know? Her uh, she's North Korean. Oh and wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying, I was saying the the left eye. She kind of it looks. What like, are you doing? You're good. You're good. Like you're one of those guys. That's nah, like, it, like it looks like it's like mismatched. Her eyes look. A I little, don't care. <laughs> it just it looks like that. It looks like she's like a robot to me. She's a babe. She I kind of looks like a robot. She's a super babe, and so my point is though. Let me see the body. I thought about you because well, yeah, she's like eighty pounds because she was like malnourished for so many years. See, now we're talking. <laughs> so, <laughs> but because of that, she was discussing in in uh, North Korea mm. how they have to collect their shit and give them to the regime at the end of the year. And you thought of me. Well, I thought of you because they. It's a struggle because they have to like give the regime um, one ton of shit every year for fertilizer and the problem is they can't shit they only shit once or twice a month because they don't eat because they're so malnourished so it's like a real double-edged sword you know interesting they they don't get to eat the food 
but they still have to like so they're running around looking for dog shit and stuff to throw into their <laughs> oh shit pile and everything God. so that they could give it to the regime so they can have fertilizer to grow crops for everyone but the people and that's real yeah that's a real place man north what korea the? it's a real it makes you go like oh i uh you know a small inconvenience in my life today <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter <laughs> when you hear about life in north korea you're like oh <laughs> okay <laughs> we're, we're doing just Shit's fine. great. Yeah, like I am killing it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would die on the first collection day. They'd be like, yeah, let me see your ton. I'd be like, I got like But you would you pounds. would probably be pretty good at the whole like not shooting for a month thing. She was like, you know, because none of them, they're all starving. That's yeah. the problem. Well, if I was in that environment, I wouldn't shit for the whole fucking year. Yeah, you probably would <laughs> actually be, exactly. If you were living in North Korea, you would not shit for like two years probably. Mm -hmm. It would all be ex like the statistic. Because you eat like, and I don't think people understand this. You eat like a child like in terms of like, hey. like chicken nuggets and ch i'm not saying it's bad a lot of people i know do but like what's your diet give us a, a rundown because i can't believe when you when i see what you eat and yeah. i've eaten meals with you yeah, yeah. i can't believe you don't just shit everywhere all the time <laughs> yeah i mean i like mexican mexican's good as fuck you know i always eat like tacos and, and yeah quesadillas and fried super chicken yeah, and things like, like like just like sandwiches fried chicken sandwiches like all the time yeah that shit i eat one of those blah, out my ass like <laughs> immediately i think my body probably wants it to do that but i trained it not to at such a young age that now it's just like nah i get it we gotta sit on this for like a week i understand god damn it, it could be the spiciest shit in the world and i'm not gonna deal with that until like I don't have to deal with spicy things for so long that it loses its spice by the time I go. So it's like everyone's like, "Oh, that's it hurts bad now, but just wait till it comes out the other end." Doesn't yeah, people like who that say that me. are idiots, though. I don't have that happen either, and it happens. Like I've never been like, really? I've never eaten something really. I like spicy food, so maybe that's the thing. But mm. like, I've never shat spicy food and gone like, "Man, really burned out the other side." Like, <laughs> not really. I don't know. I think that's normal. What's the spiciest thing you ever had? I don't know. I'll eat, I eat hot sauce on everything. Like, I get everything hot. hot. I get. I mean, I get everything, like, super hot, whatever I can. Like, I really, like, melt my fucking face. So if we went... Have you been to a Thai place? And and you said, I want, like, the hot... Yep. You, you said you want level yep, 10 I've hot. I've gone to 10. Wow. 10 Thai hot. And that did Hell not yeah. hurt coming out? No. Wow. I I think that's a you... Not as I bad going in. I think that's specific to you. I think most people genuinely... Perhaps. Yeah, you just got a strong ass asshole. Hell Congrats. yeah, fuck yeah, I Congrats, do. Congrats, bro. And I had Mexican food on uh, what was it? The other the night the night I went to the baseball game in uh, St. Louis, I went to a Mexican restaurant, had enchiladas, super hot, and I had to shit at the baseball game. Mm -mm. I didn't want to, did not want to, but had to. But it wasn't like it burned; it was just an inconvenient having to shit. But well, hey, how, how Bush Stadium facilities, <laughs> top notch. How much time was left in, in the game? Oh, man. I mean, it's a baseball game, so it's like... Oh, you can't know? There, Yeah, there is no real knowing how much time is left. I mean, I think I did it in, like, the fifth inning or something like that. There was no... How, how many there was no waiting. There's nine innings in okay, a baseball game. But uh, I did have a thing at that baseball game prior to listening to the woman speak about North Korea where I was like, man, America's awesome. I'm just at a baseball game. I'm drinking a huge beer. You know how guys say they think of baseball when they're trying not to come? I might have to start thinking about baseball when I'm trying to come. <laughs> That's the trick. That might be the trick because <laughs> I was just so, I don't know. I, I, I don't, the, the city of St. Louis isn't my favorite of cities. No offense. Everyone at the crowd was great. The show was awesome. But, you know, going to that, that ballpark and going to that ball game was just, oh my God, pure joy, pure joy. And it's like, if I can do this all the time, my life would be amazing. Dude, even just going to... Going to your show, man, was so fucking cool. Like, yeah, for sure. I mean, you guys came to my show out here in California in Brea. In Brea, yeah. And we had a blast. Yeah, everybody killed. It was a dope ass night. The crowd was good. Hell yeah. The food was good. Everything was good. And then we hung out like fucking nineteen year olds in after. a parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. Just drank our faces off. And I didn't even remember. I threw up. <laughs> yeah, you did. I forgot about it. Like, yeah. I, because I was like, here's the thing. At the end of the night, it was like the the night had wrapped up. <laughs> And we had just finished like two cases of beer in a parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was like, let's do one shotgun to wrap up the night. <laughs> and the idea of shotgunning a beer made me like want to puke. And so Dude, just before I had to get it out. So I was just like, Bleh. I don't even want to be puking right now. I don't know why I'm puking. I don't really have to puke. But I just was like kept going like, and talking and explaining it. 
that was the funniest part is that you were puking. You're just like, one second. Oh, like, <laughs> like, it was just normal. I'm like, bro, I don't think you should drink the water. Like, well, I, had, second, I do this thing where I don't eat all day. <laughs> and then I drink a whole shit ton. And so I just was like, my teeth were floating, essentially. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I got it out, did the shotgun, and uh, completely forgot that that happened until Brittany, the, the woman who runs the club, she like commented on my thing. She was like, this is right before or right after you puked or something. And I was like, did I puke? I didn't even remember. I blocked it out. But I did. I did. I puked. And uh, whatever. You know, I got through it. No, yeah, you manned up. I manned up. But yes, no, thank you for coming out to both those shows. Dude, and, it was the uh, best. I hope uh, we get some people out in D.C. next month. Let's listen to the news thing here real quick. Oh, I didn't know it would stop when Jesus I switch apps. Christ. Sorry, I thought it would just keep going. Unbelievable. Can, 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 do, do the people? Here we fucking go with this shit. Here we fun. Nothing has changed. It's free trial. Nigga, buy it. Look at this. It has free trials, this man. Unbelievable. Well, next week we'll have. I'll have my own iPad. I won't have to borrow this one any longer, and I can really buy it and do all the things. Okay, do so. Do the people know that you're lying to them? No, I'm not lying. Do the people know that this laptop, this laptop is fake. It's oh, fake Oh, no, no, no. News. This is a easel, essentially. Yeah, it's fucking. The, <laughs> <laughs> there's not this, even on. This laptop is not on. It doesn't work. The last laptop I had, people thought was fake, and it was real. No, I was playing shit, the sounds off of that shit. That shit was unfortunately real. <laughs> I can't fucking believe you still. Are, are you still, nigga, when I heard you say fucking, don't worry, I can still use the HDMI port and yeah. plug it into him. I'm like, this is attached to my television at home right I now. I cannot believe. Why do you not throw it away? Because it's my life. It's my whole life for like 12 years is on that computer, and it still has the software that I can edit on. <laughs> so new computers can't get the software you need to not edit the, on? Not the Adobe 1.5, my Nobody friend. Nobody needs Adobe 1.5. I do. I require it. <laughs> Fuck, man. I went to a radio station. I started working in Cleveland at this radio station. They had, and this is in 2011. They had already gone away from Adobe 1.5 to like Adobe 3 or something like that or Ooh. whatever. And yeah, not <laughs> even that change. far removed. And I asked the engineer, I go, do you all have a 1.5 laying around here anymore? <laughs> and so I got him to install it on my computer and it changed my, I was so much faster, dude. They did it? Yes, they of course. Found whatever makes you. me faster. Oh my God, dude. That's the fun. I still tell people i i use you as an example today about people that can't that can't uh figure out technology New technology yeah no i mean i'm a fucking it's it all of it's all by the way a product of poverty <laughs> because like i learned on a certain software never could update for decades and i just stuck with my what i had because it got me through oh right because because if you right because you that's right, because software didn't used to be what it is now, where it's right. like a service where you keep just getting the new one. That's yeah. right. You had to buy 1.5. You had to keep updating. That's right. You had to buy 3.0 and 4.0. That's right. That's true. That's and fair. I was like, nah. That's facts. Don't have the money nah. for that. <laughs> so I stuck one. in my fucking ways. I'm a decade behind. You know, I'm a cave 1. person. 1.5. It was my favorite, too, when you tried to show me how to do what you did in audition on the new one, and it was like fucking 13 version or some shit. And I had to like, relearn it to show you how to do it. <laughs> it was doing things automatically for you, and you're like, why doesn't it show me the button, like the selection? <laughs> and it's like it did it for you. You don't have to select I know. that. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, was like, why did they get rid of this? And it's like they just made it easier, dude. I'm like, well, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's stupid. Well, here's a story in the news, by the way, that involves testicles. <laughs> My favorite. Let's do it. A man died after rotting from the inside out, and he had his testicles... Uh, balloon from eating a gecko. This was all on a party dare. Eating a gecko? So this man, he ate a gecko as a party dare. Like, mm -mm. ate that shit. Probably a British Geico one, you know, like one of those uh. things. Oh, right. 15%. <laughs> and so he ate this gecko and then it made his, di his testicles balloon and he rotted from the inside out. So a tragic news story coming out of Australia. That's where they would do this type of thing, by the way. I was about to say, this motherfucker's white, right? Like, white people are oh, the only yeah. people to do a fuck eat a gecko as a dare. What? He's a father of three, and he died after eating a gecko as a party dare. The man's family said he was basically rotting from the inside out and eventually died 
uh, from the toxic animal. His name is David Dowell. He was at a Christmas party in December Fucking when a friend David. dared him to eat a gecko. David was never one to back down from a challenge, so he ate a gecko on Saturday night. Do you ever know a guy like that where it's like you can dare him to do anything and he just does it? Mm. They're, they're, they're fucking dorks, those guys. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah, it's kind of like me, though. Are you like, so if someone was like, eat this gecko, you were like, I think I should. You know, if there's money on the table, then I start to get interested. It's, if it's not just, just like, if it's literally I'm gonna like, call you yellow. Right, 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 right. I'm, I'm going to call you a pussy. No, yeah, not like that. Not like that. I feel like you're like that, though. You did that for fucking, you talked about how the shit you would do on radio. For That's like, not because I was dared to do it it was because it was content mm. that's All a right, different story enough. yeah that is true you if you were videoing this content. and you're like it'll get a hundred thousand hits or whatever <laughs> you know what i mean i would have been like okay i guess i'm eating the get-go i would have <laughs> sussed it out though you know i did a bunch of bullshit on the radio because i needed the eyes on me it gave me it heightened my uh level of exposure on that radio station that's fair not just for a fucking party of nobody mm, exactly got gotcha. you exactly gotcha. it doesn't say if there was any monetary sort of compensation for doing this doubt it it don't, it, I don't think there was. <laughs> Doubt it. A day after eating the gecko, David began to vomit green bile and his urine had turned to the color of black. Mm. See, here's the thing. These geckos, they, they make them so that like, well, they make them. God <laughs> makes them or whomever the animal kingdom is creating them. It's, they're poisonous on purpose so that like when a predator eats one, it dies. So right. then like inherently the predators know you don't eat those ones. Mm-hmm. So this fucking idiot didn't realize that, and he took one in. I definitely didn't know that. I didn't know geckos were poisonous. Some are. Some like I don't know which ones are, which ones aren't. But I mean, like, hey, this one apparently was. He. Be, I'm not going to test it. Is my point. Yeah, I'm definitely not eating a fucking gecko. Yeah. I don't, I, no. He became be so badly bloated that he looked like he was six months pregnant. His sister said. Uh, and he was in absolute agony. Two days later, he was rushed to a hospital in Brisbane. Reportedly, paramedics originally believed Dowell was suffering from a stomach bug or a severe hangover and didn't think he needed to go to the hospital. Well, that's <laughs> fucked up. It sounds like me. Paramedics are so dumb. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're Fuck heroes. doctors, bro. It's so funny, though. Paramed- Have you ever dealt with paramedics? Like, while you were a person getting a parame- paramedic dies on? Like, was a paramedic ever called on me? Yeah. No. One time I, I uh, was, should have, but we no. were blazing and smoke and drinking wine in my cousin's basement one time. And I just, uh, it had been a few days. I had been working a lot and I was like really tired, but I was hanging out. It was like Friday night. And all of a sudden, like, I was like, you know what guys, I, I'm not feeling great. I think I'm going to get out of here. And I turned around and I just collapsed and like fainted. And I hit my head on the concrete ground. Ooh. And so they called an ambulance. And so they, I came to, and my cousin's girlfriend was over me and she was like, are you all right? Are you all right? And I didn't know what happened. And then she goes, an ambulance is on the way. And when I heard that, I go, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I stood up and I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. And they're like, no, you're not good. So meanwhile, my cousin's running around hiding all the paraphernalia. <laughs> and so when they came, I admitted, I'm like, yeah, I smoked a couple bowls and I was drinking wine and I fainted or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so they just checked to see if I have a concussion. They're like, do you want to go in the ambulance back to the hospital? I go, no, no, I do not. So I just stayed there and slept on my cousin's couch that night. But I, uh, yeah, man, that paramedic, like, I think they were just like, well, he said no. So they just let me stay. You know what I mean? They don't really fucking, they're like, thank God or whatever. You know what I mean? No, like, yeah. I mean, it, it's your call at the end of the day. Like if you're over 18 anyway. Like they're not doctors, but they're not, not doctors. Paramedics. Like, I'm not throwing any shade to paramedics, but I'm just saying, you're not doctors. <laughs> you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I mean, they threw this guy awry. <laughs> I mean, like, come on. They were like, ah, oh, he's got a hangover. The guy like, ate a gecko. Maybe he didn't admit he ate the gecko or whatever, but I would have been like, ah, I think you should go inside to the hospital, pal. A day after being admitted to the hospital, finally, uh, doctors diagnosed Dow with salmonella poisoning that they concluded was from uh, some bacteria or symptoms including diarrhea, vomiting, and fever. It was then revealed that David's lungs were filled with fluid. Oh, my God. David's mm-hmm. mother remembered how much pain her son was in, and his testicles were swollen up to grapefruits. And there was fluid leaking from them, and uh, oh, doctors no. said that that was normal. <laughs> it was just all the fluid in his stomach cavity. So his stomach cavity was, like, leaking fluid down to his balls and making them extend. How about the the uh, integrity of your sack? Oh, fuck. That it can expand to such a level. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, they got fucking elephantitis, right? Where you can have like ginormous. Yeah, but I didn't know that it could expand to that. I thought you were just like born with elephantitis. So Mm. therefore your dick, your balls were that big already. But like this is apparently like his balls were able to expand to the size of grapefruits. Fuck, that hurts to think about. Oh, boy. It just feels like it could pop at any moment. It's the summer of love, baby. That's right. 
The world is opening up again, the whole world, as a matter of fact. And that's why today's show is brought to us by Babbel. You don't want to go in there and sound like a rube when you're traveling about. You want to sound sophisticated. You want to sound like you're a worldly gentleman or lady. And that's what Babbel is helping us out with. I mean, I took 10 years of Spanish. I couldn't tell you right now anything from those 10 years that were helpful in terms of conversation. And I live here in Los Angeles, where I have to use it quite a bit, as a matter of fact. And Babbel has opened my eyes. I mean, it has changed how I can retain language. It's unbelievable, as a matter of fact. And they figured it out. 15-minute lessons, they make it a perfect way to learn a language on the go. And it's all right on your phone in a sweet little app. And it's easy to do while you're like chilling at home or if you're on a bus or something like it's amazing how you can find little places to to use Babbel's lessons on the go. I was in the airport the other day. I'm like, let me just crank out a couple Babbel lessons, you know, unlike the infamous language classes that you took in high school, which, as I mentioned, not effective. Babbel designs their courses with practical real world conversations in mind and things you'll get to use in everyday life. Uh, there's so many different languages on Babbel. I mean, it's not just Spanish, obviously. 14 different languages in total that include French, Italian, German, and many others. Plus, they've got speech recognition technology, which helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. So that way you can not sound like a complete dope when you're saying some of these words. Babbel's like, nope, nope, get it right. And they make sure of it, too. It's pretty actually remarkable, as a matter of fact, how accurate it is in terms of its, um, you know, letting you know how close you are. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition, lessons can uh, access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. So if you're not just getting enough out of the 15-minute lesson, they have other things that you can do to enhance how well you're learning another language. So right now, when you purchase three months of Babbel, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com, use promo code Josh. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code Josh, for an extra three months free. Today's Josh Potter Show also brought to us by Liquid IV. Last week with Adam Ray, I mean, you saw me a little worse for wear. I was a bit hungover, and I'll tell you what, I wouldn't have been able to bring my hungover ass through the door if it wasn't for liquid iv all right i got here to night pan studio because of the fact that liquid iv helped me out that morning i mean they just you can be the hydration champ all you want with liquid iv it's crazy i mean say you're not a booze bag like your boy over here and you're just someone who likes enjoying the outdoors or maybe you work out things that are foreign to me but these things are all uh ways that you can use liquid IV or things that you could use liquid IV for. If you're going on a hike or something, pop a little liquid IV in. It's, it's, it makes you even more hydrated than normal. If you're going to, for a big workout here in the summer months, liquid IV helps in that capacity as well. Liquid IV hydrates faster and more efficiently than just water alone. It's got five essential vitamins, more vitamin C than an orange has as much potassium as a banana. It's healthier than sugar, sugar, uh, sugary sports drinks. You know, your your uh, those things are just like candy, basically, in a in a bottle. And so Liquid IV is helping things out here. They've got clean ingredients, no GMO, vegan, and uh, it's free of gluten, dairy, and soy. That may, What makes Liquid IV so effective? Cellular transport technology. I'm not even going to begin to understand what that is, but it's there, baby. So make sure you go right now to Liquid IV, and uh, it's sold, by the way, in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can just get 25% off right now when you go to liquidiv.com and use code Josh at checkout. That's 25% off anything that you order when you go to liquidiv.com slash Josh. You get better hydration today using the promo code Josh at liquidiv.com. Listen, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not one of these people who like really cares if the government is spying on me. I know they're spying on me in every capacity, but that might be something that interests you. You might go like, I don't want them to see what I'm doing. ExpressVPN covers all that up. You know why I love ExpressVPN? Because it hides your location and now I can watch Dodgers games. (laughs) Yeah, that's really what jazzed me. I've got to, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm super stoked at the fact that I am in the Dodgers market and I can watch the Dodgers games. Hell, I can watch Angels games too now because of the fact that ExpressVPN hiding my location. That's the biggest perk to me. And on top of that, I also get the privacy that I don't necessarily care about, but I know that you might care about it out there. So that is their main goal. But like I said, man, the sports aspect is unbelievable. My father, I got him ExpressVPN because he likes to watch Sabres games and he can't because he's in the market or whatever. And I bought him the NHL package. And now guess what? 
ExpressVPN. Now he can watch all the Sabres games. I don't know why he wants to so bad. They are terrible. But nevertheless, their <laughs> ExpressVPN is letting us change our online location so you can control where you want sites to think you're located. So, I mean, hell, you could pretend you're in France and watch some crazy stuff on Netflix that we don't get over here. I mean, you can choose from almost 100 different countries. You can watch Studio Ghibli films. That's anime, apparently. And that's only on the UK Netflix. But hey, if you're into anime, you can watch that on the Japanese Netflix, too. You can watch Doctor Who on the UK Netflix. There's so many, so many examples. I mean, the, the, it works with any streaming service, Hulu, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, just to name a few. So right now you can go to expressvpn.com slash Josh to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Expressvpn.com slash Josh and get that extra three months right now. Uh, the woman, the wife was searching for answers as to why her husband was so gravely ill. She was told by friends that David had eaten the gecko at the party and that could be maybe something to do with it <laughs> apparently there was drinking at the party and there were also some people who said he ate the gecko while others said he didn't and it was all a joke it was a dare so he might have intended to eat it and then thrown it away so some people thought that how about that the fucking guy could have just faked it he could have been like huh? and then just like threw it on the ground and everyone would have been like he ate it <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, he actually did eat it, and people are like, now nah, he's fucking with us. <laughs> now, the same people that are saying he didn't do it are probably the ones who dared him to do it, because they're like, I don't want any... Uh, as far as I know, he was faking. No, nah, no, nah, it was a joke. And also, no like, if I'm him, I go, I ate this gecko. It's got to be the gecko. It doesn't sound like he's telling doctors about the gecko. Right. Because... Uh, Michelle begged doctors to operate and help alleviate David's suffering. Doctors performed surgery, but David died during the operation. David's death mm. came 10 days after the Christmas party where he allegedly ate the gecko. The surgeon basically said that he needed surgery straight away, and it didn't happen. It happened days later, obviously, like we mentioned. We also asked why they didn't give him the catheter, and they said they didn't think of that. <laughs> Is this just some? Is Australia just got shitty doctors? Maybe too. What the fuck kind of? Ant they said, "Oops." This whole yeah, this whole article <laughs> is the doctors going like, "I think it's just a hangover." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's fucked up. Australia, what's up with your doctors? Yeah, don't get fucked up in Australia. They're Jesus all like Christ. fucking. You think that's a knife? This is a knife. <laughs> They're, They're like my fucking, dad. My dad's like, just shake it off. You'll be fine. Golly. Relax. Uh. So I just want justice for David, says his wife. You don't ever think anything like this could happen to you, and then it does. So, like, the hospital's, like, kind of fucked here, it's looking like. Uh, University of Queensland School of Agriculture and Food Sciences deputy head Mark Turner said eating a gecko could be deadly. It's possible that if the gecko <laughs> was eaten as it was being digested, the salmonella was released, but I have never heard of anything like this before. <laughs> it just goes to show that things as innocent as geckos can carry disease bacteria. Well, I guess that's true. I have you, my my uncle one time at a I think it was a Christmas party. He chugged a my goldfish down. Your goldfish. Yeah, he goes not just like a random one he bought from no. the store. Your goldfish. My goldfish. And I thought like, what a sight. I go, yeah, now bring it back. <laughs> and he was like, it doesn't come back. My <laughs> uncle wasn't Steve-O. He couldn't like get it to come back out. He's he like, I don't, like, I don't know that trick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He it was previous to Jackass, so he didn't learn that you could just probably puke it out. But he just digested this fucking goldfish. So wild. I always wow. wondered what like happens to you when you do that. How old were you? I don't know. I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, check this out, Sonny. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was like that. He was just like, go, 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 go. Jesus Christ. No, yeah, that's that's such a... I feel I can't imagine any black man doing that. Like putting a fucking <laughs> lizard in your mouth. Uh, we will. I would but never. But we just said why, how how it could get you to do that. Would you ever go on like Fear Factor or something for money? Hell no. Yeah. Hell no. I, I remember I would see, like, it's funny. It almost makes sense. It's like white people got nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? It's, it feels like that. There's like it's part of our privilege. Fuck it. It's I'll all. Swear. It's our privilege. We know we don't have much to lose. You know, Swallow we don't. We're always go. looking for something to put us behind the eight ball. You know what I right, mean? Right. Right. Yeah. To, to set us back. To find that thrill. This yeah, is yeah. definitely a white man because it happened in Austria. This What's next that? story, a five-foot python bites man in the genitals on the toilet. Mm. Oh, you bitch. Oh, this I know why you picked this. a 65-year-old Austrian man. Why did I pick this? You son of a bitch. Do you not know? No, I don't. Oh, you don't like holes. Yeah, not only did I not like holes, I don't like toilets. And well, I, I get because that. Of the, because of the thought of something like this happening. I know you fucking know this. 
I didn't know. I I realized this now. I didn't. Re- I picked this actually for last week. We just didn't get to it. So I mean, <laughs> it is kind of a wild coincidence. Wild coincidence. Now you don't like holes, and I know Doctor Drew deduced. Does that mean you don't like like if a girl were to like spread her pussy? Yeah. And you see, in, like as I've nah, seen, it's, it, it doesn't it, do it, the same thing. I mean, I'm like because you not, know where that one goes. No, because it's. <laughs> 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 I know what that one feels like. Yeah, you know uh, the end of that one. You know that one. I know that one's going inside you. I know my limits. No, uh, it, I'm I'm not there when I'm when I'm fucking. You know what I mean? It's like the, the whole point is to empty your mind and just like feel. So trust me, I'm not there either. But but uh, different, different scenario. Oh, right right right. <laughs> but because of that, no, it's it's never it's never led into that. Um, but I do hate him for saying that because it did make me think, and I'm like, please please don't remember this when I'm in it. So far, I have not. Mm. But what uh, about like if she was like reverse cowgirl and you saw her asshole? Does reverse. that does that bring up any? No, no, because it's no. tighter. Because again, it's it, not a, just a but it's gaping also, it's, hole. But I'm fucking. It's like it's, yeah. it's a little. <laughs> yeah. d- if you now, gave me a like, I, I would wonder. You gave me a dishwasher or a, a, a fucking sink with the damn garbage disposal in it, and you told me to put my hand in it while I'm fucking. I might be like, like all right, whatever. Like, yeah, fucking. exactly. <laughs> I mean, you're fucking. It's like you could say yes to anything. That's a good point. I, I can see that how that but, logically would would make sense, but this guy. But this hole, just want to yeah. make it clear, that hole right there, it you bugs could, you. Yeah, you couldn't pay me money to to fucking put my hand. It just in goes there. To the other side. I'm not doing it though. Like I don't even like. Is that, that why? That is that why you don't anxiety. like the fly? Oh wow! Because it's technically a hole. It's a flap. It's like a tent flap, actually. Wow. But I mean, like you don't have a, like that door over there doesn't bother you. The door. No, you know, that's a that's well, a big a hole. hole. It's a square hole. It's not a hole. There's no hole. I mean, if it was open, it was it would be a hole. But I see the the other side. Yeah, but it, if you looked in there, you'd see the other side. If I looked, but right now I don't. I don't see it. I just see a hole. The walls. Yeah. So it's like if I were to put my fingers in there, I just feel like something on the other end is gonna fucking eat my fingers. Wild. Or something. It's just, okay. No, it's I anxiety, get it. Bro. That's interesting. That's it's interesting. Anxiety. Uh, it's still unclear how the loose reptile made its way to the 65-year-old man's toilet, but police believe the snake apparently got there by sliding through the drains from mm. the neighbor's apartment. The victim's neighbor, who owns 11 snakes, well, I think that's where it came from. Are you fucking kidding me? He's like, I don't know where it might have came from. Maybe we should look at the neighbor with 11 snakes. <laughs> He's like, okay. no, 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 I have all 11 accounted for. Trust this me is not. why they should give you like a blue book on your neighbor's. Ooh. Like a dossier on your neighbors. So I know I'm moving in next door to 11 snakes because I won't move in there if that's the case. That's true. Hell no. If they had a fuck one tarantula, just one. Oh my God. Fuck, tra- fuck spiders, dude. Out. I do not do spiders. If I, out. the best part about being blind is like if I see one, I can just go like this and I go, <laughs> I'm not bothering with it. It's just a I'm shadow. just leaving it be. <laughs> it's killing the other bugs. So we're fine. But I cannot, if it had fur on it, I've never seen oh. a, a big scary spider. Like one time my roommate said there was like a, one of those wolf spiders. What are they called? Yeah, that's the biggest one. That's the giant one. Yeah, there was one in my apartment apparently. Oh. Like in my living room. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? He goes, no, I shoot it out, but just keep your eye open. And I was like, shoot it? What no, do you, you mean shoot it? Like he got it, it outside. Like, no, no, it. no. Kill it. What do you mean shoot I can't, it? I don't want to kill. I can't kill big no, bugs. Not dude. you. I'm no, no, no just, I know, but I, I mean, not, like, I'm glad would. he didn't kill it either because then its guts are on the wall. And, and you think other spiders are attracted to the. No, I just like. <laughs> my I just, brother died. Here. I, I, I can't, even when, no matter when, like, I've killed bugs before, but I've done it through euthanization where I've, like, sprayed poisonous chemicals so that they die and then I could take their corpse and put it into a cup or something and dump it outside. I don't, I think don't like their guts in their blood and shit on the walls. I don't think that's how euthanization works. <laughs> I they, euthanize they, them with poison. <laughs> It's like they're like they're in my concentration camp and I'm spraying them with gas. And they consented to this. No, they're I'm <laughs> killing them. I'm murdering them, but I'm euthanizing them. I guess euthanization is a It's usually kind of like a team effort, you know, <laughs> in a way. Yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah, euthanization <laughs> is kind of like a please do this to me situation. Like I didn't that's fucking true. Stop it. I don't so know what the it, better word is for it, but you I, suffocated uh, is what you yeah. is what you did. That's I mean that's what Ray does, right? It, it I like go, come to the showers. <laughs> You Dude, know? <laughs> that's what that's what made me afraid of roaches because I tried to do that to a roach and that motherfucker just kept on. You can't kill us like that. No, there was a no. hotel room I stayed in during COVID uh, mm-hmm. here in Los Angeles, and I, a girl came to stay here in Los Angeles, so I got her a hotel room during COVID, and I didn't I didn't get her the best hotel room. 
Just saying. You got her one. That's a I got her one near my house. You're a gentleman. Yeah, I got her one. It was gentleman. fine. What a gentleman move. Anywho, I go to do a, I had to dip out to do something and I, I was gone and she sent me a, a video of a roach on the ceiling and it was huge. It was like, I don't know. It was big. It was one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. So she like left the, the hotel and she's like, when you come back, you have to take care of this. And I'm like, what kind of guy do you think you're this? with? What the fuck? And again, I don't like squishing bugs. I hate it. I really can't stand same. squishing bugs. Same, same. I, I don't. I can't do it. I have to like let them free, if anything, or I'll spray them and kill them that way. So I get a cup and I trap it on the ceiling and then oh. it's just like there. And it's like, I can hear it like, <laughs> like squirreling around, <laughs> oh, getting all squirrely. And so oh. I'm like, ah, oh, oh. And then finally, like, I get the cup down and it, it leaps out of the cup. And now it's just out there. And I'm like, where the fuck did it go? And then finally, like, I get it to go outside. This thing hung out outside the door for like two days. Like, it was just <laughs> chilling there. And we'd walk by and we'd be like, hey, Roach. <laughs> just smoking a cigarette. Yeah, yeah dude. It was hey, what's like, up, motherfucker? It was like just like waiting for us to leave so it could go back into that room, I feel like. <laughs> it was so fucking weird. Roaches are weird, dude. I can't believe I haven't seen more of them, like, in my apartment or something like that. Like, you know. Come to Van Nuys, bro. You can come see him anytime. There's nothing I mean, especially when my, ho- my, when my apartment was as bad as it was last summer, I, like, look back and I go, I can't believe there wasn't any, like, bugs in there. Like, it's not that I had food or anything. Like, I did. I just had beer cans. But even that, I feel like, <laughs> you know. Even that. You, what do you mean, even that? Well, because, like, they, I don't know what they are attracted to. I mean, definitely trash. Like, dude, you're old. How, wait, hold on. It's kind of a segue, but your your apartment, yeah, that video, yeah. How is the status of your apartment compared to what it was at the beginning of that video? Oh, now? Yeah, like it's not like that. I mean, I'm not like I'm not going to say I'm pristine, mm-hmm. but it's not like that. Like that was like severe depression. I thought I was going to just kill myself. Like I really <laughs> just thought life was over. I'm never going to perform again. I have no purpose, and I thought I was just like going to drink. Thought, feel this COVID shit out, see how it happens, and then just hang myself. Well, that's not like a roach at all. Roaches <laughs> live, baby. They, they move past. Well, yeah, no, I, and I did. Now. I made it out. So. Look at you now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know you were a roach. I didn't know. I mean, I, roach this whole I slowly time. became it, and I was one even then. Maybe that's why they weren't there. I was the roach living in that apartment. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah, no, it, I even had – I say this all the time. Like, that is the one piece of content that I almost regret – doing yeah because it's like now people think that's just like how i've always lived and how i live still and it's not it's like that was a mental breakdown well why didn't you i don't think you said that i definitely said that a lot you did on (laughs) on, on ymh yeah yeah i even said i was like i had girls hit me up after that video came out and where they were like oh man it must have got really bad for you because like they've been to my apartment Mm. and friends have stayed at my place and like used my bathroom and like it's never been like that. Was it? Hmm. Was it like, uh, like a fucking, like a palace? No, but it wasn't ever like that, ever. And it never, hopefully, will be again. But that's the one thing where, like, I get why people think that about me because of the fact that it's a piece of content that exists, and it's like the only look into that kind of thing well, that exists. Well, you know? your brand is the roach. So. Well, that too. I mean, I'm not saying I'm a, I'm like an opulent. Uh, person here or anything like that but i'm not opulent i i don't even know if i use that word right can I don't you google even know opulent that, what is opulent why you say these words around me? you know i'm dumb come on man. i just was trying to think of the proper um way to describe like i'm not like perfect obviously it's not like i opulent ostentiously rich and luxurious or lavish so yeah i'm not like it's, i still live like a fucking gross person but i'm not like you know it's not i had women over before that that were like you know you should clean your sink but not like you know it wasn't so to the point where they were like so grossed out that they weren't fucking me i get it man i mean you get chicks it's like if you were that guy that i think that video leans towards then you wouldn't be you wouldn't be doing anything that you're doing. You wouldn't, right. You, you wouldn't get the chicks that you're doing. You wouldn't get the shows that you're getting. I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess, but it was like you got it some was, some some lack of self awareness. I would say if you're what that video, I feel like I feel like if you were to only watch that video of you, the person who they would gather who you are after that is well, there is a faction of humans out there that that's what they gathered, <laughs> and so that's why I do say it is one of my regrets content wise. 
doing that video. I could have just not done that, and maybe Tom would have just paid someone to clean my my room and like fix me for a second. Because <laughs> it was, I mean, it was like it was fucking. And then I look at it and I got to watch it back, you know. And mm. I was like, God damn, dude! Like, I don't know where. Like, I put up blinders to it. I yeah. really did. Like, it was just, it was it was months and months of quarantine on top of like I I had come off the road, <coughs> and um. It was already kind of messy coming off the road. Like you just let shit go when you're on the road. Totally. And then I came off the road and then I was just quarantine central. And I just was like, who cares? No one's coming over. No one's going to use my bathroom. Like I don't even want to use it. I don't want to like get up tomorrow, let alone, you know, I don't know. So it got really bad. And I, I tried to say that in the, in the video. I don't know what exactly made it to it, but. Oh, I'm sure that was out. Uh, all, all I remember was, I mean, exactly what happened. There was yeah. a mess, and there was the clean, and then that was it. That was it. That's and people the, think, like, I mean, people are like, oh, it's you're a hoarder or whatever. I'm like, maybe I have, like, that in my brain somewhere. Like, if I had a mental break, that, that would how that's how it would manifest. I don't know. I haven't done enough therapy or whatever to figure all that out. I think Dr. Drew would have been a little more concerned if he thought that was the case too, you know? Right. Maybe he is. I don't know. <laughs> but he, he still asks about that. Uh, that. Uh, well, yeah, no, because he didn't. He still calls me about my my cyst. Uh huh. That. And um, what you doing about that? No, it's fine right now. It's I fine. I told him he knows the deal. Like I, he's actually called me to like follow up on it. I have to get it r- removed completely. Like it's oh. right now. It's not um, bothersome. Mm. Uh, but I have to eventually, like, no matter what, I, and that was the case all along. I have to get it removed, and I just, I got to do it. And uh, <laughs> you just have not. I just have not. No, yeah. <laughs> I hate. Do- I mean, I. I hey, man, I totally. Get I will you. once I have enough money where I can just be like, oh, it's not a thing. That's that I don't even know that it's costing me money. I will do it. Right. You know, and like, time and done. stuff like that. Yeah, just, just take it, it out. I told him I would do it. Like, if he knew a surgeon and I could just go in and get it done. I would I would have done that, but it's like this whole like he's encouraging me to get insurance mm-hmm. and this and that. <laughs> what a piece of shit! What an asshole! Insurance? No, he's fuck great. you think I am? No, but it'll happen. And uh, do you have an, a, a good insurance yet? The non-scam no. one? Oh, you just no quit I that after the scam? Yeah, <laughs> we'll get one back. Next up, we have a guy. Now this is interesting. This is a Florida. This is from Austin. Roach reporter out there. He sent this in. A Florida man washes ashore after trying to walk to New York in a bubble device. Bubble? Did you hear that correctly? Yes, I've seen pictures of it. It's like like a man in an inflatable bubble. The circle, the big sphere. Yes, and he's walking on the water along the shore from Florida to New York. Uh, 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 A Florida man startled beachgoers when he washed ashore inside a hybrid bubble running wheel device. The man identified... See, these, this is white people shit, for sure. Oh, yeah. This guy just has so much time on his hands. He's oh, like, yeah. I want to walk on this bubble thing from Florida to New York. And he knows it'll make the, the news and stuff. Is that what it's about? This is about clout? That's, what, that's all he wanted? It, it has to be. It's all that this shit is. I was saying a story. I forget what podcast I was discussing this on, but Niagara Falls was a, a thing that's in Buffalo, you know, or near Buffalo. When you live in Buffalo, all your family wants to go see it and everything like that. There was one time a man named Kurt Jones who just walked into the Niagara River and laid down flat on his back and went over the falls. And And you're dead, right? Well, he laid in a particular way where it was enough to shoot him out over the rocks, past the rocks, and he landed in the water below, and then he survived. So everyone was like trying to interview him after that. You know what I mean? He was like a local celebrity. And he claims that he meant to do that. Everyone, everyone who's kind of like, you know, looking at this situation goes like, this guy was trying to kill himself and mm-hmm. he just didn't work. Mm-hmm. So he claims that he was like, I'm a stunt guy. <laughs> I meant to do this. So time goes on and then he tries again, but this time in a barrel. The barrel, of course, weighing too much, does not get shot out over the rocks. Instead, just goes straight down on top of the rocks where then the subsequent water will crush you and it's smashed and he died. <laughs> So at for that point gram. you're like, yeah, exactly. For the this was before the gram, this was before Twitter. He just did it for the the cloud of of doing it. But everyone wondered, did this guy have a death wish? And then he just fulfilled it finally, like at the end of it. For sure, let me see if that you, man's will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why, like, people like this, you go like, does this guy want to get eaten by sharks? 
And 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 when he washed up, was was he uh, unconscious or he washed no, up? No, no, no. He just was still. like walking on the thing, <laughs> and it like he's in a bubble, so like it keeps getting you know <coughs> waves and shit push it onto the shore. Mm-hmm. So then like people are like, "What the fuck is that?" And it's just the guy like, <laughs> I don't know how far out he goes or what. But my goal is not only to raise money for homeless people. So now he's doing this shit. Like, I'm oh, gonna raise. Fuck you. Oh, How does that raise you. money for homeless people? I homeless don't know. people. What a prick. I want to also raise money for the Coast Guard. Raise money for the police department. Raise money for the fire department. How much money are you going to raise? You're going to give everyone these 20 bucks? From what? Who Who was like, did he fucking partner with somebody? That's the thing. No one asked you for this. No. Guy, no one asked you to raise money for anything in your dumb bubble. <laughs> A video of Baluki's YouTube channel posted in September of 2020 outlined a plan to travel to Bermuda in the bubble vessel. It was unclear if that voyage took place. According to his website, he was preparing for a similar voyage in 2016. At that time, according to the website, uh, Baluki planned to set off near Miami and travel north along the coast before veering east uh, toward the Bermuda Triangle. On the way, he planned to stop in Puerto Rico, Haiti, Cuba, and Key West. He planned to survive on protein bars, tuna, seawater purified through a filter, Gatorade, and chewing gum for seasickness. I was about to say, did, like, did he bring snacks or what? He just Sounds fucking, like it. He brought fucking protein bars and shit. Man, this is just how much, I want to know how much money he has and how fucking bored he is. Like, Wait a minute, but that's the end? Get some pussy. Yeah, that's He end. doesn't die? He doesn't die. No, he got washed up. And, he should uh, die. He, I mean, it's not... It's not it's not out of the realm of possibility, I will say. Just, just cut him, cut him. Oh boy, ain't a, ain't a good, ain't a good. I'm just imagining. Uh, can you imagine like if homeless people were watching this? Like, the fuck? Like you're doing this for me? How about you just give me the money that you yeah. <laughs> spent to make the bubble? Yeah, that's that same motherfucker that crosses them on the freeway, and they're just like, oh, sorry, I don't have cash today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You jackass. I, don't worry, I have a charity coming. <laughs> I have a bubble. You'll see. You'll see. Follow me at at waterbubble.com. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking jackass. Beep, 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 but tell me about Well, it. I'm telling you, yeah. And, you know, normally this would be an exciting night for your boy here. <laughs> it would be a night where another football season's underway. Last year we didn't have preseason. I particularly enjoy preseason because you get to see guys fight for their lives, compete for jobs. In this case, I am, I am saddened. I, it's like Terry Pagula has ripped my heart out of my chest, and he's just holding it there. And he's like, you want this back? That's kind of what's happening right now. And see, what's going on is the Buffalo Bills, my favorite football team, uh-huh. one of the only reasons I continue to suffer through this life, I love them so much, and they take away all of the, like, you know, I could be stressed about this or that. The Bills take away that stress. That's, like, my thing. By so, existing? By playing, by existing, just, okay. like, burying myself in their news Damn. or, like, watching the games or just, like, you know, even when they're bad. It's just some, and it's, it's an escape. I and in the sports. so, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I Baseball has provided this as well for me lately, but the Bills are my main source of this joy. Mm-hmm. And right now, Terry Pagula is getting ready to build a new stadium in Buffalo for the Buffalo Bills, who are on the rise. They are uh, start. They, last year, we went to the AFC Championship. We're hoping we have Super Bowl aspirations now, and. Terry Pagula, the owner who took over for Ralph Wilson after he passed away, kept the Bills in Buffalo at that time, making us all breathe a sigh of relief because we thought when Ralph Wilson died, someone was going to come in, they were going to move the Bills. Donald Trump tried to buy them. (laughs) Um, John Bon Jovi tried to buy them. He was going to move them to Toronto. The Bills. The Bills, yes. So if if Trump bought the Bills, would you still— He wouldn't have become president. Um. We could have saved this whole last— Would you still be a Bills fan? Yes! (laughs) <laughs> he might have fucked him up though that's the problem because he's of course he would fuck him up yeah like so you have to worry about that but okay okay so so what's happening what's happening is they're they're building a new stadium and this has happened throughout the league it happened in Oakland it happened in San Diego he is asking for taxpayers to foot a bill of 1.1 billion dollars 
A hundred percent. Like meaning he doesn't pay for the new stadium. The taxpayers pay for it in its entirety. Hmm. And he said if they're not if government officials are not willing to provide this taxpayer money, then there are plenty of cities in the United States that would love to have an NFL team. Hmm. One of such cities has been floated out from a secret source in the ownership group that said Austin would be the city. Mm-hmm. So that means you're moving to Austin. Mm-hmm. Sean's moving to Austin. The fucking Buffalo Bills are moving to Austin. If that happens, folks, I will crawl to the top of that tower where that Marine shot a bunch of people <laughs> and I will throw myself off of it. I you, swear to God. <laughs> Why don't you just move to Texas with us, bro? No. Come to Austin. I can't do it. We want you. I can't go. We love you. I'm telling you right now, Terry Pagula. <laughs> I will abandon all of the successes that I have in life. I will dedicate every ounce of time (laughs) that I can muster up and the strength that I can muster up to destroying you. (laughs) I know it doesn't sound like much, this little guy on this podcast, but I will become like V for Vendetta. I will fucking ruin your life. At the very least, you'll be thinking about me constantly. And if you know you want to report me YouTube or whatever for a veiled threat, go for it. <laughs> oh shit. Things work differently around these fucking Go parts. for it, YouTube. <laughs> Don't you fuck with my bills, Terry Pagula. I swear <laughs> to God. And this is the thing. If, and people and now they've since backpedaled, okay? They've they've really backpedaled since there has been a lot of like, "Whoa, fuck you," because he's he's really just doing this emotional ransom. He's holding a gun to the heads of po- politicians like an emotional like Figure it out. And it's fucked up. No matter what happens here, the Bills could stay in Buffalo forever after this, and I still I still say, fuck you, Terry Pagula, for doing this to me. I know it's a negotiation tactic, but now everything is sullied. You know what I mean? Like, tonight, the Hall of Fame game's on. Preseason begins this week. I can't really enjoy it because I have this nagging fear that the Bills might not be a thing anymore in Buffalo. So mm. I'm sitting there watching these things, and I have this melancholy sort of feeling about it all of the time nagging at me it's like trying to go like let's go out for taco tuesday after you just found out you have cancer (laughs) (laughs) i i guess i guess i see how that would work i don't you don't you don't understand i mean i just don't i'm it's like okay so but i don't understand if if the bills is the right you said it's the bills you said if trump owned the bills you're still with the bills yeah if the they're bills. in buffalo why buffalo because that's where i'm from baby that's it yes it has that's everything it. to do with it and it means from so America, much baby. I, I get that and i understand but it's it's just a thing like that is all we have buffalo yeah i mean we have <laughs> other things but that buffalo? is like the biggest i mean no the bills are yeah. all we have i mean like it's such a forgotten footnote of a city and I just, I mean, it's just, it means everything. It means everything. Why, I, I can't explain it. Then why aren't you there? I would love to be there. I really would. I would still, I said this all the time. I would live in Buffalo if there was any semblance of show business there. I stayed there entirely too long. <laughs> mm. So I would have definitely stayed there. There was no part of me that wanted to leave Buffalo aside from progressing my career. But what if this is just the progression of the team? That's not how it works. <laughs> I definitely don't get sports. I, I I don't understand it at all. I don't get team loyalty. I don't get getting mad that they lost. I don't get any of that. Well, that's that, the thing. I, like without them, I don't have any of that anymore. Because I don't have any. Like with when it comes to baseball, mm. I, everyone kind of makes fun of me for it. I really don't have any l- team loyalty to any team. I just love the sport. So like I can root for storylines or players, or um, you know just a fun happenstance or whatever. Like I just love baseball. Is there no Buffalo sport uh, team? Not in the major leagues. Mm. There's a minor league team which is affiliated with the Toronto Blue Jays, which makes me lean towards the Toronto Blue Jays. But here's the thing. They've been the affiliate in my lifetime of four different teams. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not going to float around like a fucking asshole. <laughs> so I just like all the teams. I see. I see. And there's a hockey team, which, by the way, Terry Pagula owns and has platooned into the ground like a fucking like they have never been this bad in my lifetime they were like when i was a kid the buffalo sabers top tier hockey program hockey franchise top of the mountain 
People were begging to play for the Sabres. Now, gutter trash. Terry Pagula has Just because of them. one guy? This guy has fucked it all up. Wait, wait, Terry Pagula. From the top a, down. Wait, so it's the same dude that owns the... Yes. He owns all of it? He owns the Sabres and the Bills. And he owns a lot of real estate in Buffalo. And God damn. I said this from the beginning. I go, we're putting all of our eggs in this guy's basket. What if he turns out to be a prick? Well, I mean, that's just kind of insane. Football and hockey, just that alone. Never mind all the real estate and all the other money and shit. Jeez. Yeah, he got it all from fracking. <laughs> Is that normal? Like, do coaches from football? It's not a coach. It's an owner. Oh my bad. He's a he's a, a, a an oil man mm. who loved the Sabers growing up. He mm-hmm. was he used to he tells stories. He regales us in stories about how he used to listen to them on the radio and blah blah blah. Then he buys them and just they shit the bed so hard since he's bought them. They haven't made the playoffs once. It's been a decade. It's been such a drought. Biggest drought in hockey. And and they let him buy the football team. Well, he saved the football team technically. Huh. So people were like, we can look past the, the Sabres because you saved the football team. You kept them in Buffalo because he realized having an NFL football team in Buffalo only helps the hockey team. It helps the real estate that he's purchased. Of everything. Yeah. It helps... Everything in the city. Helps the morale of the whole city. So he swooped in and bought the Bills. And they've been fantastic since he's bought them, in, in his defense, as far as that goes. So kick him out of the fucking hockey team. There's Let no him focus him on out. the... Oh, There's no well, kicking him out. Well, but fucking a. one of the things, one of the poisonous, lecherous people that have been through the Sabres since his tenure there was Evander Kane, who's kind of a good... He plays for the San Jose Sharks right now. Sounds like a wrestler. It does sound like a He's actually a black hockey player, hmm. believe it or not. And uh, so uh, let me pull up this that little list of things. Fake. So, <laughs> 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 um, but he had like some tumultuous time in Buffalo. Tumultuous. I say. What is up with this shit? Tumultuous meaning like. Where do you had, get your vocabulary? I don't know. I read books. <laughs> That's it. It's, yeah, it's really. from books. It's not from like. Did you do like AP I love fucking books. vocab in school or some shit? I was an AP language. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There it is. But that's because I very much loved learning new words. Yeah, fuck. I remember the last, like, interesting word that I learned was myriad. A myriad, yeah. Yeah, myriad. And I'm like, I'm done. I love that. I say that a lot. I say that word, I almost think wrong, but I do say that quite a bit. So some of the things (laughs) Evander Kane did off the ice while he was in Buffalo, he would walk out on bar tabs reportedly all the time. (laughs) Uh, He got knocked out in a bar fight once. That was back in Winnipeg, though. Uh, And he also had many assault charges stemming from his incidents with strippers. Mm-hmm. That got kind of brushed under the rug. One of those. So that was Evander Kane when he was in Buffalo. Kind of a, a bit of a menace, a bit of a bad guy, you know? A lot of this happening. <laughs> I don't care about that. I don't care about... You could go philander with strippers. You could do a lot of blow. When you start hitting them, that's when I get a little like, come on, man. <laughs> that's the line. That bro. is the line for me. <laughs> that's completely the line. I don't care if you're doing blow as a hockey player. I don't care if you're hanging out with strippers. That shit doesn't bug me. It's when you start hitting them or whatever. But now he's got a wife. She's pregnant. Um, she's mad at him. So she ripped him on a scathing Instagram post claiming the San Jose Sharks forward is gam- a gambling addict who purposely tanked games for profit and abandoned her with the toddler uh, at a party in Europe while their husband or while their house was being taken by the bank. Th- this is her words? This is her words. Ooh. This is according to an Instagram stories that have apparently been uh, prompting a, an investigation from the National Hockey League. Uh, she said uh, in a tweet, or no, the National Hockey League said in a tweet it was aware of the post and intended to conduct a full investigation. Anna Kane let loose on her husband in the blistering post, painting him as an addict who had left her with no money to even buy formula for their daughter. How does the NHL let a compulsive gambling addict still play when he's obviously throwing games to win money, she wrote. Hmm, maybe someone needs to address this. That was what stemmed this whole thing. Holy Just shit. Just that Instagram post by his wife. Uh-uh. Don't a, tell him, don't tell him. Yeah, <laughs> in another, the wife him. of the forward wrote, can someone ask Gary Bettman, who's the commissioner of the NHL, how they let a player gamble on his own games, bet and win with bookies on his own games? Kane's manager de- de- uh, denied the allegations, telling the Post they are serious but not true. We've been advised not to say anything right now, says uh, the manager Kurt, uh, of Evander Kane, adding the couple was just having problems and that the player would speak out after an investigation was complete. In a statement posted to social media, Vander Kane denied the accusations by his soon-to-be ex-wife, <laughs> <laughs> calling them false, and that he had uh, has 
never gambled or bet on hockey or any San Jose Sharks games while adding that uh, he'd never thrown any games either. He added that he is looking forward to cooperating fully with the investigation. Vander Kane filed for bankruptcy in California back in January, just two years after signing his seven-year, $49 million contract with the Sharks. In November 2019, he was sued by Las Vegas Casino over $500,000 in gambling debt. Anna Kane describes a devastating scene in which her Instagram st- or in her uh, Instagram stories so you leave July 8th, you do not call or text at all for seven days, then you inform me you are going to Europe for a vacation, must be nice, but at the same time tell me our house is being taken by the bank, but do not come for uh, do not come home for help, or er, do not come home to help your pregnant wife pack or help her with anything at all, she added, claiming King never calls their one-year-old daughter who walked around the house with her bunny saying dada for a week looking for him. So this woman is just writing this on Instagram stories, which, by the way, I did tell you about my knowledge of history of Patrick Kane with the blow, with the hook, with the strippers, with the things, the bar tabs. I still hate this wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is this? This is all like a well. Anytime a woman is that voluntary with nonsense on Instagram, mm-hmm. it's red flag central to me for sure. So, like, a part of me goes, like, well, like, what are you doing, lady? You know, like, there's ways to go about these things that aren't on Instagram. But because of this now, the the NHL is investigating him. I don't don't see how they wouldn't – I don't see how she doesn't understand how this would come back to her, though. Because if it's like, if you were doing all that, and he – or he was doing all that, and then he told you, and you were just kind of holding on to it and – using well, she's that 100% money. getting investigated also. Yeah, it's like, well, why would you say that? It, like, you think he's just going to get fucked from that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's for sure. Whenever they blow Whenever too there much are little, information. little blatherings on their Instagram stories. Mm-hmm. It's like, I wonder what the, I wonder what's really going on behind all this. There's ways to do this. Like, mm-hmm. if this is, if this is all 100% true, there's ways to get it out in the media and etc. Not on your Instagram stories. Then you delete them in a, in a flurry of deletions mm-hmm. after that. So, I don't know, I got my... Uh, Evander Kane has ruined the star of the Buffalo Sabres, Jack Eichel. This is a theory that I have. This is not proven in any way. But Evander Kane, we know he liked that. He made Jack Eichel start to like that. <laughs> and Jack Eichel has been ever since. And now he's not a team player. He's not a proven leader. He wants to leave the Sabres. I hope we trade him soon. But um, I think Evander Kane was a bad influence on Jack Eichel. I mean, he sounds like it. He's sitting there beating strippers and shit. Yeah. No, for sure. Seems like a bad guy. But also, like, at first I was like, is this a guy like I'd like to hang out with? And then you were like, no, he's the kind of guy where you go like, this guy's kind of cool. And then all of a sudden, like, it gets too far. <laughs> and you're like, oh, shit. And then he yells at the waitress. You're like, oh, oh, I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And you're he's like, let's those. just leave. Fuck the tab. I'm like, you're a millionaire. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah, no, he's a bad guy, I think. Uh, have you been following the Olympics at all? Of course not, no. Either have I, dude. The Olympics are for dorks. They are the Ben Shapiro of sports. (laughs) I hate the Olympics. I I saw one where they were fucking scratching the ice or whatever. That's curling. That's actually, you know what curling is? That's like bowling. Yeah, Because in Buffalo, Buffalo, you can go curling places because it's so close to Canada. So like, and we love hockey and ice shit. And like, you can go out and go curling on like a Friday night. Which is fine. You can you can get drunk and drink beers, but like you bring a big ass brush and you you don't bring anything. You show up. They got all the stuff. <laughs> they lend you the brush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> on the ice rink, you do it, and then like you you do the thing and like bizarre fuck around and it's like bowling. It's like a it's like playing shuffleboard on ice or something. It's mm-hmm. like a bar game, but you can drink beers and hang out. So I think of like curling as fun like that. Mm-hmm. It's as fun as playing ping pong or something. But yeah, I wouldn't like I'm not watching people win the uh, Olympic gold medal for it. Right, right. It's it's like that fucking uh, what was that game we played at fucking uh, cornhole. Cornhole. Yeah, like they're not making that in the Olympics. Shit. Exactly. Yeah, it's like what the fuck are we doing? The thing that I always liked about the Olympics, though, and this has been long a rumor, is that all the athletes in the Olympic villages are fucking. And mm. that was always cool to me. I'm like, that's the coolest part. Like, I would just want cameras in there. Like they're all fucking each other. Yeah. Because they all have to stay sense. in the Olympic Village, right? Yeah, yeah. And in the Olympic Village, they go through a, a, this massive amount of condoms. Because <laughs> they're all athletes from all over the world. They're <laughs> just enclosed in this. They're all of a certain age. So they're all just fucking each other because they're all hot and like athletic and shit. Right. You're like, you're the only girl that can keep up with me. Right. Like, And that's more... 
like you you could be a guy in the Olympics and not even qualify for the final event, let alone get a medal. But if you fuck Nastia Lukin, I'm like, whoa! I want to know about that guy. That's a that's a win, baby. Put that guy <laughs> on the Wheaties box. That's my hero. That's my Olympic hero. Hell but there yeah. was a headline this go around because of COVID and things like that in Japan and Tokyo, where they had made these cardboard beds and they said like it's to prevent fucking. <laughs> But there have and been sleeping? it has since been debunked. Uh, uh, the most unusual story in the lead up of the 2021 Tokyo Olympics is the plight of the athletes in the Olympic Village. Due to COVID-19, the youth of the world will be mostly confined to dormitory style living in the village of Harumi, a piece of reclaimed land in the middle of Tokyo's harbor. But the issue became with the bed or the issue came with the beds, which are made of recycled cardboard that can easily be repurposed after the games and not add to the carbon footprint. Wait, so that does sound... Oh, so it was just a myth that it was for fucking. Well, let's find out. Okay. okay. At one point, it was alleged that this was done intentionally by the Tokyo Organizing Committee to keep athletes from, ahem, doing what athletes have been doing in the Olympic villages for generations. This guy should have just saved that four sentences and wrote, fucking. Fucking. It's to prevent fucking. Don't but be fear a pussy. not. Those that hope to find love or at least the next generation of Olympic capable perf performers, the beds can handle more than one person. Despite this terrific thread from former USA silver medalist Paul Chal Chalimo, Irish gymnast Reese McLellanhan, uh, puts a myth of the chastity beds to rest with the video evidence declaring it's fake news. So they, they showed in a video, they're like, we could fuck on here. <laughs> you could fuck on pretty much. I mean, like, <laughs> would that really prevent, if you're trying to fuck and you encountered a cardboard bed, where you're like, I don't think that can handle our weight. <laughs> here, there's a video of it right here. This guy's doing it right now. He's showing like, listen, if I had a girl on here, I could fucking drill <laughs> her on <laughs> this bed. She's fucking finished, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, I've fucked on a bathroom floor. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't if the bed matter. collapsed, guess what? You're just fucking on the floor. Yeah. These you're, people are dumb that thought it was like they're trying to curb the sex. There's no curbing it. That probably upped it, if anything. If, could you imagine if you broke a bed when you were fucking? You'd be like, oh, fuck yeah, like, I'm fucking getting this bed. <laughs> this article's so dumb. Since all village athletes have a roommate, the dorm rules of freshman year college apply here, too. If the cardboards are rocking, don't come knocking. You should kill yourself for writing that. <laughs> who I don't is, even know the, who who is this journalist? I don't know who wrote it, but who I don't know. We, we need, we need information. But man, oh, man. I, I, and again, like I said, the real heroes are the ones who are putting up numbers in that Olympic village, fuckwise. Right. You know. You know they got a leaderboard somewhere. They're like, that's what I want to know. I want to know the medal count in the fucking village of who's fucking or not. They're like, that's pretty cool. I heard you got a world record yesterday, but uh, <laughs> fastest jizz. <laughs> not a world record you want to take home from the games. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, think about it too. If two supreme athletes fuck and make a baby, you just got. The next generation of Olympian there. Right, yeah. That's a fucking superhuman. That's Hell scary. Yeah. I love it, dude. Hey, what a fun episode. Dude. I'm so sad you're moving with the Bills to fucking Austin. But, you know, maybe that, that'll get me to go there, maybe. I fucking hope so, man. I want to see you again at the very least. I mean, yeah, I'm going to come down there. You got to do shows down there, Hell right? yeah. No, that's 100% happening. Okay. But uh, as far see. as living there, we'll find out. But if the Bills well. move down there, Terry Pagula, I swear to fucking God, dude, don't make me. Don't make me do what I got to do. All right, you gotta come, bro. You gotta come. You, you you know what? You gotta at least come for the for the housewarming. No, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come down and party a bunch of times. Hell yeah! Don't get me wrong, for sure. But I love you. Do you want to plug anything? I don't know. Uh, do I want to plug anything? I mean, I'm so inconsistent. I got a YouTube. I got Twitch. Any Kravitz. It's the same name. But uh, I don't really know what I'm doing yet. I was gonna start up a thing, a show later called uh, Simp Saturdays. I was going to be talking about how dudes don't know how to, they don't understand how to get chicks. And it was going to be like talking with girls mm. to say what, at least what not to do. Because you can't tell a man what to do, but. You don't uh, think he should be a simp. Is it like a bad thing to be a simp? Not necessarily. Exactly. It's, it's more like if you are a simp, at least know your role. You I know feel like I, mean? I can come give a special TED talk in this uh, sort of scenario. You are 100% invited because, yeah, you. absolutely. You, you'd, you'd be a, a top pick for me. Top well, pick. for me. Uh, twitch.tv slash josh underscore potter going strong uh, as of this week here for august doing a lot of baseball and football is coming back at the end of the month so get ready for that 
also uh if you want to see me live i would love for you to see me live live shows are where it's at dude honest to god it's where i feel the most alive it's i want to do as many as i can and you coming out really affects my future ones as far as getting booked and stuff and you've been doing wonderfully so far i've got the dc improv right in the big main room september 30th and then we've got five freaking shows in buffalo new york thanksgiving weekend uh, thir- uh friday saturday and sunday night so all those tickets should be on sale uh if they're not they will be shortly and you can get them up on my twitter at j underscore potter or my instagram which is at josh underscore potter thank you so much for subscribing to the youtube channel if you haven't please do that click the bell as well and uh, thank you for rating reviewing and subscribing on itunes or wherever you listen on audio it means the world to me continue to do it please and uh, we're going to leave you now with a song from last week it's a reference to last week, you see. Grass Kingdoms made this bad boy. He remixed Adam Ray singing the 69 is my favorite number song. So enjoy that, and we will see you next Tuesday on The Josh Potter Show. We came to the song. Every time she would sit down in class in front of us, we would go, 69 is my favorite number. 69 is my favorite number. 69 is my favorite thing to do. My name do you want a 69 with you? 69 is my favorite number 69 is my favorite number 69 is my favorite thing to do My name is Rachel Do you want a 69 with you? <laughs> Did, do you think she liked to be the 6 or the 9?